In the previous episode, I showed you how to set up guest users. This allows a user to try an application without first signing up and providing their information. So we can use the app fully, and then later on, if they decide to like it, they can become a member, and then they can complete the sign-up process, and everything that they did will be persisted to their new permanent account. Now here I'll be building upon that episode and looking at some ways that we can improve the code. So this is the user model that we left off with. And what I want to draw attention to is the checks for whether the user is a guest. And the first check happens when we do validations. This validation should only really apply to members as they're signing up and not while we're creating a new guest record. Also, down below here, I have a check for when we're displaying the user's name. It'll change depending on whether they're a guest. Now this in itself isn't too bad, but as the application grows, I can imagine this condition being a common occurrence throughout many methods in the user model. For example, what if we have these following methods? We might have some restrictions on how many tasks the user is allowed to create or if they can share them and other authorization related logic, or whether if we want to send a password reset email, we only want to do that if they aren't a guest user and so on. Seeing all this diverging behavior makes me think that this logic should go in separate classes that speak the same interface. One way to do that is using single table inheritance, or STI for short. The way this works is that you simply add a type column to the database which stores the name of the class for each record. This way you can use inheritance to differentiate behavior. Now single table inheritance has sort of gotten a bad rap over the years. I think there are some good use cases, but I've seen it abused more often than not. Still, let's try it out in this application and see if it's a good fit. I'm going to generate a new migration to add a type column to the user's table, and that'll be a string column. And I'm also going to generate a migration to remove the guest column from the user's table since that is no longer needed when we're using single table inheritance. And then I'll migrate the database. Now we just need to split up the code in this user model into separate classes. Most of it is not shared between them, so the only thing that is shared is the tasks association. The two classes names are going to be member.rb and guest. So I'll just make a new uh, class here and let's have it inherit from the user model and I'll paste in the code. So for the guest, I won't need any of this validation or authorization logic. Uh, or anything with uh, dealing with setting attributes. I do want a way to create a new guest user record, but that can simply be done by going through this guest model. And moving from a guest to a normal user is a logic that should go in this class, so I'm keeping it here. And now the name doesn't need this conditional check anymore. And the task limit can also be cleaned up quite a bit. And whether they uh, can be uh, shared by other users, if tasks can be shared, is something that's always going to be false for guests. And sending a password reset is just not going to do anything if we're a guest. Wow, so this is a lot cleaner now and it's easier to see the behavior of a guest user. I do want to add a method in here called guest though because there is some view related logic that needs to be conditional based on this check. So I'll just say true for this. And then for the member, that's also going to be a uh, class that inherits from user. And I'll just paste in that old user code in here. And this is going to have quite a bit more code in it than the guest because it needs these validations and authorization behavior. But we can go back to has secure password because we no longer need to make the validations uh, dynamic based on whether the user is a guest or not. So that cleans it up a lot. And we don't need this new guest uh, factory method or the move to method. I don't plan to call that on a member user at all. So this is just going to return the username for the uh, the name and the task limit is going to be a thousand. They can share it if they own the task and that delivery should happen always since they are never a guest if they're a member. Oh, and I do need to make a guest method since I am doing that check elsewhere that'll return false for a member. Wow, so this is feeling a lot cleaner. There are just fewer conditionals overall in either one of the classes. They just feel much simpler. However, we're not done yet with this refactoring. We also need to change the way the controller works here. This is going to create a new user when they sign up. Now, when we create a guest, that's just going to simply call guest.new instead of that class method we had before. And when they're a member, it'll call member.new, but we do need to pass in the member parameters instead of user parameters since that's what will be submitted by the form 
if it's a member class. Now let's try out what we've done and see if it works. Clicking try it for free. Well, that takes us to our task list, which we can uh, use properly. And when we click become a member, well, we get this exception saying there's no method on members path. So it's trying to use a members route that we haven't set up. Well, if you take a look at our routes file, you can see we have this users resource, but when we're creating a member model, it's going to look for a members resource and expect it to uh, respond to those RESTful actions. So we could set this up so that it redirects to the user's controller, so that way we don't have to create a separate controller for members and guests. But I think it depends on how you want your application to work and how separate the controller behavior is for guests and members. In this case, I feel like creating a guest is quite a bit different uh, behavior-wise than creating a member, and they should function a little bit differently in the controller layer. So in that case, I'm going to split these two up into two separate controllers, members and guests, instead of a single user's controller. So I'll rename this existing controller to uh, members, and I'll also need to change the name of this controller class to reflect it, and this means I won't need this conditional to check if we have any member parameters to determine if we want to create a guest, since that's going to happen in a different controller action. And that sort of makes sense to me because this other process is uh, going to do a validation check and display the form in a view. And we don't really want to do that for a guest since it should never fail validations anyway. So it makes sense to me to move that logic into another controller. Let's call it guest controller. And I'll just paste in the code for this since it's so simple, just to create action where we make a guest record, turn him as the current user, and redirect back. So if we compare this create action with the members controller, it's just so much simpler, it makes sense to keep it as a separate uh, controller action. Now there are a lot more other places in this code base to rename users to members, but I'm going to do that off camera since it's not that interesting. There we go, now let's try it out. This time, when I'm a guest and click become a member, I get the sign up form instead of an exception because it's properly handled by the members controller. And when I complete the sign up process, it takes me to the awesome to do list with that new user account. In the end, the behavior of this application hasn't changed, but I think the code feels cleaner with STI in place. Now it's hard to say the same thing about the database though. If we take a look at our schema, you can see that the users table has three columns that only apply to members. Guest users are always going to be null for these. This doesn't look too bad here, but it can quickly get out of hand as our application grows and we need to add more columns that apply to one type of user or another. Suddenly this table becomes a dumping ground for a lot of different fields that take up unnecessary space in our database because it isn't properly normalized. A general rule of thumb is that if you have several fields in your table that are not shared by all types, then single table inheritance is usually not the best approach because it gets pretty messy. If you're in this situation, a good alternative to STI is polymorphic associations. This allows one model to belong to multiple other types of models. So the end result is kind of similar to single table inheritance, but allows the different types to have their own model and database table. Now there are a couple of different ways that we can add a polymorphic association to this app. One way is where a model relates to the user. So in this case, a task belongs to a user, so it has this user ID column. We could add a user type column in here as well, so it can belong to either a guest or a member and have those as separate tables. However, that means whenever we add another model that needs to relate to the user, that also needs to be a polymorphic association, and I'd rather not do that if we don't have to. Another approach, which I like much more, is to keep this user's table, but move these columns that are specific to a member out into a member profile table, and then we can have a guest profile table and have a polymorphic association between users and the profile. Okay, let me show you what I mean here. Uh, first, I'm going to generate a migration to remove the member-related columns from the user's table. So that's going to be the username, email, and password digest, and I'm also going to remove the type column since I'm not going to do a uh, single table inheritance here. Now let's create two new models, one called member profile, and that's going to have the username, email, and password digest field since that's what's going to contain the authentication logic and then another model called guest profile. And that's not going to have any columns here since I don't have any data specific for guests, but if I add any, this would be a good spot for it. 
And now that we have two models that we need to associate with our user, I'm going to generate another migration to add the profile to the users. And that's just going to be the profile ID, which will be an integer, and the profile type, which is a string type. Now you'll probably want to add a database index to those columns to improve performance, but I'll leave that up to you. Then I'll just migrate the database to uh, do all this stuff. Okay, so now we can set up the associations. So our user model belongs to a uh, profile, and that's going to be a polymorphic association. And then we can set up the other side. So our guest profile, that has one user as a profile. And you might want to put a dependent as destroy. So that way when you delete the guest profile, it will remove the, the extra user record as, as well. And we can do the same thing for our member profile. Now the methods in here can be the same as the ones we defined for our guest and member classes that we use for inheritance with STI. So let me move these over. There we go. So I removed the guest and member models and moved their logic over to the profiles. So you have to watch out when doing this though because you might access user-specific attributes such as right here, can share task. It's a good idea to check the uh, user ID here because otherwise it'll be checking the member profile ID, which isn't what we want. Similar to the guest profile here, I have this method called move to user, which uses the tasks association, which isn't present on the profile. Well, let's think about this now. Do we still need to create a separate user record when they sign up as a member? I really don't like having to update all these user IDs for any model the user might be associated with. So instead of doing this, we can just swap out the profile that's associated with the user record. That way, that won't change. So let me rename this to become member and toss in the member profile as an argument into here. That way we can change the user's profile to the member profile and then save the user. Now you might want to move this into the user model. Uh, I'm just going to leave it here for simplicity though. Okay, we now have all these methods that we can call on the profile, but in our application, we're calling those methods on the user record. So we'll probably want to set up some delegation from here to the profile. And I'm going to do that by pasting it in. So that'll just delegate various method calls to the profile that's associated with it. Now, there are a lot more other changes that we need to make throughout the rest of this application. For example, the guest controller just creates a guest record, which we now need to create a user record and assign a guest profile to it. Now, you might want to uh, do that in a user class method, but I'll leave it like this for here. And there's a lot of similar other changes you'll need to make throughout the app. I'll do that off camera just to save on time. Now the end result is that our application behaves the same way using a polymorphic association as it did with uh, the single table inheritance solution, but it feels cleaner to me because uh, we don't have to worry about a lot of extra null values in the database and transitioning from a guest to a member is a lot cleaner. It just swaps out the profile the user is associated with. Now there are certainly many other solutions to this problem. Uh, for example, the guest profiles table might not be necessary at all. It doesn't really contain any special data in this case. Uh, we could have a null profile ID represent a guest user. In that case, uh, we don't need to make it a polymorphic association. It would just always belong to a, pro a member profile. And then we could create a simple plain Ruby object to handle the case of a guest profile. But that's rather app specific, but is something to consider if you just have two different types in your polymorphic association. Another alternative to single table inheritance is the state machine gem, which I covered in episode 392. This allows you to define specific validations and methods under each state, which uh, is good if you need to transition from one type to another frequently. But in our situation, I think the polymorphic solution is much nicer. Well, that's it for this episode on single table inheritance and polymorphic associations. I especially like the end result of this user model because it really slimmed it down from what we had at the beginning. The user model can get pretty heavy in most Rails applications. Well, that's it. Thanks for watching.